Peter Bull. I teach Chinese history, and I am the director of the Center for Geographic Analysis. So I'm interested particularly in, as an historian, I'm interested in Chinese society and politics and life in general from around the 7th century to the 17th, particularly its intellectual and cultural history. But I'm also interested in local history, in collecting local documents and things like that. And as somebody who's also interested in the combination of space and time and spatial temporal analysis, how we join the geographic and the historical, I am interested in maps, but also databases that have spatial reference or what we call spatial attributes that could be transformed into spatial visualizations or geospatial and lend themselves to spatial analysis what we call geographic information system analysis, for example. As an historian, I direct a, uh, a project that is concerned with creating uh, a large database of Chinese biographical or prosopographical data. And people contribute it. The more people who contribute their data sets, their data, their knowledge, the better the sum is for everybody. And so we, what we see happening is people contributing more and more, everyone benefiting more from that. In the past couple of years, we've developed something called World Map. And anyone can go to it, it's free. You can upload maps, download materials uh, without cost. Uh, and very simple URL is worldmap.harvard.edu. And the premise of World Map is that we'll create a platform in which you'll be able to load your spatial data sets and share them with everybody or nobody, it's up to you. And if you share them, then you can create your own maps using different layers of information drawn from different sources. And so at the moment, we have around 500,000 people using this system. We have around 8,000 registered users, which means people with the right to, to save data to upload data and create maps and save their own maps. Uh, we must have on the order of mm, a couple million, well, the data points I think are, are numbering in the millions, but around 16,000 uh, data layers from all over the world. And so you can start to say, well, I'm interested in doing a map of some part of the world or looking at data, spatial data from some part of the world. I'll put that. In, then I'll upload some of my own, but I'll draw on the things other people have created and put that together. And that's the power of open access. That one thing that I create for myself turns out to be very useful for a hundred others. And by us sharing, we all become better for it. The, the benefits are fairly obvious. If I contribute and you contribute, then both of us are better off. We know more together than we know singly. But there's another benefit as well. And typically, when we do research, we gather often, or people who use data in research will gather a lot of data. They'll analyze it, and they'll publish their conclusions. How do we make the data on which their conclusions are based available to people? Now, we have systems at Harvard, for, which are open to the world, for quantitative data sets. World map is the basis for spatial data sets and sharing spatial data sets where you can visualize things right away, you can see what you're doing, you can add in new data. And that means that rather than throwing your work away, so to speak, your raw data, um, you can make it accessible to people at the, very, at, a, at the level of granularity you wish, and you can save it and share it into the future. I think that uh, things are most successful when they're somewhat organic, they're somewhat from the bottom up, where our job as an institution is to create the infrastructure that makes it possible for people to do things that are in their own interest, but also benefit others. And that's what we're doing. Um, and I, I'm not worried about it growing. It will grow, because it, and it should only grow, in fact, if it benefits all parties.
This video was produced by the Office for Scholarly Communication, a program of the Harvard Library.